The song says, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth, they do adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. If you've been blessed to be here today, can somebody say amen? amen? Oh, come on, if you've been really blessed, can somebody just shout hallelujah? hallelujah. And if you've got room for a bit more for blessing today, can somebody say praise the Lord? I just want to thank our young people for singing that song, I Will Praise, one of my favorite songs by Trey McLaughlin. We thank you so much for the way that God is using you. To the music team, uh, Sister Doriel um, and Jasmine and the rest of the team who have put this day together, uh, we thank you so much for allowing God to use you in the way that he has. Uh, for those of you that are new to Croydon, um, I cannot see your faces right now because there are so many of you. But for those of you that do not attend on a regular basis, welcome. Uh, my, on behalf of my senior pastor, Pastor Rayston Smith, um, and the leadership team, we welcome you to spend time with us today. We pray that you are blessed as we go into his word. Uh, today, I'm going to invite you to stand on your feet as we read the word of God. We are continuing our series started last week by Pastor Smith on the addiction of pride, but today is music day, and so we will talk about when praise is enough. And so we want to and share a word from 2 Chronicles, if you have your Bible, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we're going to read from verses 21 through to 24. That's 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we're going to read from verses 21 through to 24. Now, it would be remiss of me for um, my parents to be here, not to mention them. Uh, my parents are here in the row near the front here, and so by the grace of God, church, um, we'll, we'll preach all right. <laughs> So if you have any complaints, don't come to me, but go to them, and <laughs> you'll, you'll be all right. Um, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 21 through to 24. Let's read responsibly. I'll read the first verse, and you read the second, and then I'll read the third, and so on. The Bible says, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Verse 23, for the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy one another. I'm going to read verse 23 just for emphasis one more time. For the people of Ammon, Moab, stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end to the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped destroy one another. Today I've been impressed to share a word entitled, When Praise is Enough. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we... We are humbled at this moment for who you are. Lord, we recognize that we have not been as faithful to you as you've been faithful to us. And so, God, it is for this reason we join the songwriter in saying, great is your faithfulness. Lord, today I pray that as you seek to present your word, that you would hide me behind the shadow of the cross, that you alone would be lifted up, seen and heard. For after all, you said in your word, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men and women unto me. So, Lord, I pray that you would speak with power and authority, that the person who has come here today, whether it be through song or for the word, Lord, you have promised that your word would never return unto you void. And so, Lord, may it find a rest and place in our hearts today, and Lord, even convert me as I'm speaking today. Use me as a mouthpiece. Lord, you were never concerned of numbers, but just hearts that were connected to you. So speak now, for we, your servants, are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. When praise is enough. I think it'd be fair to say 
that most of us, if not all of us, know what it's like to grow up in an environment of praise. I mean, even if you weren't a Christian, many of us knows what it feels like to hear some sort of praise taking place. You see, if you had a grandmother like mine, you didn't need much to hear praise and worship. I remember my mum would drop me off at my grandma's house when I was younger, and we could be watching the TV, but grandma didn't care. I mean, all of a sudden, she would take this deep breath and she would start to echo the words, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain. And just when you thought she was going to go over and sing all four stanzas, she turned the switch um, and she changed it on you, Brother Bobby. You know what I'm talking about. And she would start to sing songs like, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. And just when you thought Grandma was finished, when she was done, when she was going to sit down to have her pray and have some food, she went further because back in those days, the old folk used to have worship just not on Friday night, but every night at sunset. You know what I'm talking about. Every night when sunset came, Grandma called us together, said, boys, we're having worship. And she would sing the same song every single day. It would simply go like this. Now the day is over. Night is drawing nigh, shadows of the evening, still across the sky. Jesus, keep the weary, calm and sweet repose. With thy tenderest blessing, may our eyelids close. Saints, Grandma, she knew how to praise God. Grandma, it didn't take much for her to praise God. In fact, Grandma was praising God all the time. And so I assumed then, because Grandma was always praising God. I believe that it doesn't take much to praise God. And so I believe that whether times were good or bad, all I would just do is to praise God. But saints, can I be honest that sometimes when life gets real, it's not always easy to praise God when you're going through something. You see, grandma, she was able to praise because she had lived years of experience with the Lord. But me coming up, I didn't realize what that meant and how that was to translate into my everyday experience. And so every now and again, I realized that it was hard for my praise to match when things weren't going well in my personal circumstances. Stay with me because we are going somewhere here in our text. We find King Jehoshaphat. I mean, can you see him? He is there. He is the king of Judah. And the Bible says that not only is he the king of Judah, but he's not any type of king. But in fact, he is a king who did right in the eyes of the Lord. Understand, he was appointed as king because how many of you know you can have people in position, but position does not make you godly. Position does not mean you have a connection with the Holy Ghost, but Jehoshaphat, he is a man who is in position, but he also loves the Lord. Can you see this man? He is there and he is now charging the new judges as he appoints them over the different parts of Judah and watch what he says. He says, listen, listen, if you would just live a life holy and acceptable, if you would just lead the people in the way of the Lord, then things would go well. He is charging them. He is doing all that he should do. And then out of nowhere, the Bible says, does the people of Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir lift up their voices and say they come together and seek to destroy Jehoshaphat and his people. I mean, saints, this doesn't make sense. Jehoshaphat was living a life after God's own heart. Jehoshaphat didn't do anything wrong. But yet, after obeying God, Jehoshaphat finds himself in some trouble. Because how many of you know that just because you obey God, sometimes when you obey God, it might actually lead you into trouble.
Let me come closer and sit beside you. For some of you, you went vegan, but you still caught the disease. For others of you, you had marriage counseling, but yet you find yourself in a situation where your marriage is breaking down. For others of us, we went to the university that God told us to do, but yet student finance aren't willing to pay out the money. Sometimes you obey yourself into trouble. See King Jehoshaphat as he is living a life after God. But now the Bible says it's not just one, but three nations, people of Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir, come together and collude. And saints, you should know that these people didn't even like one another but yet for a common purpose to destroy somebody that they don't like. They decided to collude with one another to defeat God's people. Saints, be careful who you collude with to destroy God's people because things will never end up well. See them as they come together to collude against God's people. See the people of God as their backs are now up against the wall. And how many of you have been there before where you've been in a situation Situation and you feel boxed in by the enemy and you don't know what to do and you're wondering, God, how on earth am I going to get out of this situation? For some of you, you wake up every morning early to lift up your voice and pray the protection of God over your family, yet for some reason, you still find yourself in danger. There are others of you who wake up early in the morning to study and you spend hours and late nights with your friends in the library, but yet when you get to the exam, the exam paper does not reflect what you have been studying. Saints, sometimes you might feel boxed in by the enemy, but can I just encourage you that when you feel boxed in by the enemy, that's the time when God is about to show up in your life. Don't faint, don't lose heart. Why? Because God is on the way. Amen. See it now as the enemy. They come from every angle, Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir. They do not like one another, but they have a common enemy. And so they plot to destroy Jehoshaphat and God's people. Oh, can you see the text now? As Jehoshaphat, although he is confident in his God every now and again, like many of us, he has some doubts, he has some fears, and he is starting to worry, wait, God, what is going on? How could you allow this thing to happen to us? But I like Jehoshaphat as a leader, for he does not have a board meeting to survive what he will do. He does not go and gossip with everyone around to say what maybe other people should be doing. But Jehoshaphat, the Bible says, proclaims a fast, proclaims a fast over the whole of Judah and says, that's for me and my house. We might be scared, but we will serve the Lord. Amen. Can you see him as they are now fasting? And while he is fasting, he gets some things off his chest and he says, Lord, did you not promise us? Did you not tell us that if we are under affliction that we can cry out to you and when we cry out, God, you won't just save us, but you will hear us and you will save us. Lord, were you not the one who told our four parents in Israel that they should not invade these very people, but now they have turned around because we let them go and now they have come to attack us. Lord, what is going on? And I can see Jehoshaphat, he is flustered, he is expressing himself to the Lord, but the Bible says after he gets all off his chest, he says, Lord, but understand, I don't know what to do. Things don't look like how I want them to go, but Lord, we are trusting in you. Lord, I don't have the answers, but our eyes are upon you. Amen. See him now as he says, our eyes are upon you. And saints, this is important. Why? Because 
you should know that Jehoshaphat was a man of power. In other words, he was the king of Judah. What does that mean? Well, as Jehoshaphat spoke a word, he had the authority to announce and command one thing. And as he commanded, things would take place. He could tell people to come here and assemble one army in one moment. He could tell this person, do this and do that. And they would obey the authority of the king. But see this king. This man with great authority, that he does not exercise his authority in human strength, but he recognizes that while he might have earthly power, there are some things that in this world you cannot control on your own, but you need the help of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about pride this month. And see, as Jehoshaphat said, wait a minute, I've got power, I've got authority, but understand, I haven't got enough pride to let me know that this goes beyond me and saints there are some situations in your life where some of us we are too prideful we've got too many things in our life where we think we can take control and we can do it and we can shift things around but I'm here to let you know that there are some things in life that go beyond you there are things that you cannot control and like Jehoshaphat you need to stand up and lift up your voice and say Lord we've got no power and we don't know what to do but Graydon our eyes are upon you. Yeah. See him as he recognizes that as much power as he has, as much authority as he has, he recognizes that the only constant there is is Jehovah. You see, as the king, he would recognize that there are people who have gone to war and haven't come back. He would recognize that under his tenureship as the leader, that there are people who served under him for a little while and now no longer serve under him. In other words, he has seen people come and people go. He has seen armies attack and be defeated. And so now he recognizes them that the only constant that we can trust in is our Jehovah God. See him as he cries out to God. And I like God because God will always respond. You see, he may not respond how you want him to respond, but he will always respond. He responds now, and the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came over Jehiziel, And Jehiziel came to Jehoshaphat and he said, listen, Jehoshaphat, you need not fight in this battle. I'll read the text. He says, hearken, ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord God, be not afraid nor dismayed. By reason of this great multitude, Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir, why? For the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. And saints, sometimes you might go through situations and you might feel boxed in like Jehoshaphat and understand every now and again the reason why we feel overwhelmed is because we still think it's our battle. We still think that that co-worker that gives us problems is our problem. We still think that that child that is playing up is your concern. We still think that people that are spreading gossip about you has something to do with your character. But saints, can I just remind you under the authority of the word that we don't have to fight our own battles because people may come and people will go. But understand, I have learned in my short years living on this earth that the battle battle is not mine, but the battle is the Lord's. And I'm wondering if there are two or three saints under the sound of my voice 
that know that they've had some prognosis, but they've been willing to hand that thing over to Jesus and they've seen God come through. Oh, some of you still won't get me. Well, my dad is here as a living witness. You would recall back in January, I shared a testimony how my life had been shaken up and been troubled. But saints, I never told you the end of that story. Well, the good news is I don't have to say much because my dad can stand up to his feet right now as a living testimony that God lives and he proclaims. Why? Because the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. Just hand that thing over to God and watch God work that thing out. See him. As he says, the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. I like Jehiziel, for he says, the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's, Jasmine. And then he says something. He says, just stand still. Just The enemy is coming against you. There are three nations that are seeking to kill you. But Jehoshaphat, just stand still. Oh, some of you missed that. There are problems in your life, but just stand still. You're worried about something as I'm speaking, but just stand still. And then he goes further and says, stand still and see. I wish someone would just taste and see. The salvation of the Lord. And position yourself. Oh, the text is good because sometimes, as saints, we need to learn how to position ourselves. You see, when he says stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. You would recall when Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast that he said, Lord, did you not promise us? In other words, he is reminded of the promises that God has made in the past. In other words, he says, Lord, you told Israel not to invade these nations, but now they are coming back to invade us. What am I saying? Well, understand, Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah, they are a cognizant people. In other words, they understand history. And so they can refer back to a time where this is not the first time they heard someone say, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And so when Jehiziel says this, understand, he says this with a purpose in mind, knowing that their minds would go back to Moses and the children of Israel before the Red Sea. Oh, the Red Sea is before them and Pharaoh and his army are behind them. They've got their back up against the wall, but they cry out to God and God says to Moses, talk to the people. And Moses says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He lifts up his rod. He puts the rod in the water, but it was not the rod, but it was by the power of the Holy Ghost that as he put the rod in the water, that the sea opened up and sea that is wet allowed the people to walk through on dry land. And the Bible says what was a problem was a pathway rather for God's people became a problem for the enemy. So when now he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, all he's really trying to say is just position yourself in a place where you can see God about to perform a miracle in your life. You've got to position yourself. He's going through stuff, but He's positioning himself. His back is up against the wall, but he's trusting in God. But I like the text for, as some Americans would say, the text gets gooder. (laughs) The text gets better. Why? For now, after hearing a word from the Lord, the Bible says that Jehoshaphat and the people don't waste time 
without seeing any evidence that God will actually take on the battle that he proclaims. The Bible says that the people come together, they bow down and worship the Lord, and they start to cry out, praise the Lord for his mercies endure forever. Now, since this is important, why? For the battle hasn't even started yet. But even before the battle takes place, they start to worship and praise the Lord. In other words, they don't see any evidence yet that God will come through for them. But they have learned that they don't need to see evidence in order to praise God. Why? For their trials do not dictate their praise, but their praise dictates their circumstances. And so they bow down and worship the Lord. And the Bible Bible says that after doing that, everyone's come together. Jehoshaphat now says, well, listen, it's time to fight. Ah, oh, saints, get ready for you would have thought that he would bring together people with the best soldiers and those who knew how to fight, those best generals and his amazing lieutenants. But no, the Bible says that he calls together the people and after talking, Brother Sivan, he calls together Croydon Choir and he says, listen, understand, we are going to fight the people of Moab, Ammon and Mount Seir. Oh, saints, see the text for the text gets better as he calls calls together not weapons of warfare, but he presents the weapon of praise. And the Bible says that they come together and they start to sing, have mercy for the Lord. His mercy endures forever. And saints, as they begin to sing, I mean, I could just imagine the scene. Can you see it? As he calls forth the praise team, he says, well, I need a soprano somewhere, a first and second tenor, perhaps someone on the bass and even a baritone somewhere. He starts to call Call forward the instruments and calls forward someone on the piano, someone else on the harp, perhaps even the drums, yes, in church, hallelujah, and some more things. And the Bible says loud cymbals, and even then they start to proceed. And while the enemy come together with their weapons of warfare, my Bible says that God's people start to proceed with the weapon of praise. Yeah. But saints, that's what they say. But the question is, what will you say? What will you sing when an illness is lurking through your body? What will you sing when there's foreclosure and repossession on your house? What will you sing when you have served the church faithfully and yet no one remembers your name? What will you sing when you give everything to God and it seems like nothing is coming back in return? The thing is, I know what they sung, but the question is, what will you sing? You see, I like to sing Jesus Keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain. Here all the kneeling stream, there's a precious fountain. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. All saints, be not dismayed. Whatever betide, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, he will take care of you. All saints, I said, God will take care of you. Through every way, through all the way, he will take care of you. And as they sing the song, the Bible says that as the people of God lift up their voice to praise and worship, 
The Bible says that now the enemy, the people of Ammon and Moab, now start to lift up their swords. And as they lift up their swords, they don't come to fight God's people, but they look at the people of Mount Seir, and instead of killing God's people, they start to destroy one another, and things get confusing. And I was wondering, wait a minute, aren't they meant to fight God's people? But saints, understand, when you praise God, when you lift up God in your circumstances, when things don't make sense, when you should be confused, Marvin Sapp said it best, praise will confuse the enemy and see them now as they start to kill one another left, right and center. And the Bible says that they've lift up their swords and they destroy everybody, dog, cat, everything until there's nothing. And the Bible says that it gets so good that God's people now, all they had to do is just overlook Oh, saints, stay with me. Read your Bible. It says they just stood and overlooked on the plain. They didn't have to lift up one finger, but all they had to do was just overlook. Saints, I'm wondering today if there's anybody in Croydon who would just stand with me and just overlook at your circumstances. I'm wondering if there's anybody who would just overlook at the pain. I'm wondering if there's anybody who would just overlook at what you're going through, knowing that what you see now does not tell the whole story. For the Bible says that when they are finished, they go down and they see all the dead bodies, so much so that they start to collect what God had laid out for them so they had more to end with than they started with. Why? Because God's grace is so good that he'll bring people who are coercing against you to destroy you and he'll allow them to destroy each other in the process so that he'll lift you up in Jesus' name. The song says, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. You see, we're talking about pride this month. It's prideful for the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to believe that they can come up against God's people and succeed. It's prideful that you think you can control your own circumstances and your life. It's prideful to believe that because you've seen God do it before, that you understand the recipe to success in this life. But today we're banishing all pride. And we're saying, Lord, it's sweeter to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word. And there's somebody under the sound of my voice, you have come here today, and you like music. Perhaps you were preparing to leave halfway through the service, but one of the deacons stopped you at the door. You see, the fact is, that circumstance that you are dealing with, God wanted you to know that it is not in your own might, nor by your own power. For the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. I don't know what your battle is today. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know your circumstance. But what I do know is this, is in spite of what you are struggling with now, God's promises are sure. Just position yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Just to take him at his word, just to Everybody stand in. First 
verse one more time. Let's sing the first verse. Understand it's all right to give your life to Jesus. There's somebody here today. You witnessed the baptism two weeks ago. And you felt so moved that you want to be a part of that next baptism. There's somebody here today under the sound of my voice who wants to lay aside all pride. They want to lay aside all unction that they know what they are doing and say, God, for too long I've lived a life of self-destruction. But today I'm willing to submit to you. It is sweet to trust in Jesus. If that's you, just raise your hand where you are and I'll pray for you. Trust him, how I prove him forever. Amen, amen. I've raised your hand. If you just come down to the front, I want to pray for you. If your hand is raised, come down to the front. I want to pray for you. I see you at the back. I see you, my brother. Come. Heavenly Father, God, the truth is, there are times in our lives where we seek to honor you. There are times in our lives, Lord, where we seek to put you first. Lord, the truth is, we felt like for many of us that because we have a relationship with you, that will keep us immune to the circumstances of life. But Lord, we find ourselves too often in the company of Jehoshaphat, where although we are serving you, we find ourselves in troubling situations. Situations that take us aback. Situations that throw us off guard. And Lord, if the truth is, even now, as I'm speaking, some of us are scared to the bone. Ah, oh, but Jesus, teach us how to trust in you. Teach us, Lord, that when we are overwhelmed by our own circumstances, that we don't have to rely on our own strength. But Lord, you've given us the ability to submit everything we have. And so, Lord, today we confess that we aren't in your house because we know everything. But, Lord, we are here today confessing that we are here because we know nothing. But all we know is that you've got the power. And we want to lay our eyes on you. So, Lord, just like Jehiziel did to God's people, remind us that the battle is not ours, but the battle is the Lord's. 
As the Lord, we rest in this promise, knowing that this promise gives us the license to worship even in the midst of our circumstances. And so, Lord, even now, as we're going through troubling situations, we cry that you're holy. Even now, as we are struggling with health issues, Lord, we say you are worthy. Even now, as we are struggling to do things that we used to be able to do so easily, Lord, we say, Lord, you are still worthy of all honor and glory. And so, Lord, we recognize that you cannot be moved like a slot machine simply because we say certain words. But, Lord, you are touched with the infirmities that we were. Lord, that you lived life on this earth. And because you can identify with us, so, God, I'm praying today that you will identify with each and every one of us. That everywhere where we are feeling hurt, pain and anguish, maybe physically or mentally, Lord, we have learnt today that praise is enough. Praise is enough to get us through our circumstances. Praise is enough to overcome our prideful lives. Lord, praise is enough to overcome the enemy so that when we praise God in the midst of our circumstances, praise will indeed confuse the enemy. And Lord, finally, I'm grateful that you give us the opportunity to watch what the devil meant for evil. Just allow us to overlook and see the salvation of the Lord. So I'm praying for my brothers that have come down to the front who have said that they want to surrender their lives to you. Lord, as they have come with a pure mind and spirit, Lord, I pray that they will never forget that whether or not their circumstances are good or not so good, that they would be reminded that praise is enough, that you will see them through. And so I pray today that you would consecrate their decision. I pray, God, that you would give them freedom. For the Bible says where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Freedom to overcome. Freedom to live a new life in Christ Jesus. And Lord, as they walk out of this place, Lord, I pray that we would barely recognize them, that they would come out a new person. For you said in your word, if any man or woman be in Christ, we are new creatures. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so Lord, today as we prepare to sing the chorus again, Jesus, Jesus, Lord, we are thanking you that it is sweet to trust in Jesus. We're thanking you that it's okay for us to praise even in the midst of our circumstances. Lord, we're thanking you that you've given us the privilege to just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And so we just say thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.